This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. You know, this is very much in, in the vein of what we've been talking about on Hack 5 recently in that whose responsibility is it to secure your data? We're not just, you know, your, your login, your data, all of those things. Um, is it the service provider? Is it the, the cloud service? Uh, or is it you? You know, I think and, and it should be you. Well, it should be you. And it can be you. With open standards, you have this prepaid phone card model mm -hmm. where, you know, the prepaid phone card, you, you buy it, but you're secure and anonymous. You can use a service and you can buy several cards. I love that. <laughs> I, I have, I do this. I, I buy SIM cards with cash yeah. and I feel really good knowing yeah. I've got an IP address that is yeah. not tied to anything. Exactly. So that's sort of, I think the privacy needs to be put on the, you know, we, we love the internet. We've just had that discussion before this. Um, and the privacy on internet is key. We, it's not sure we want your government or your service provider to own and control your identity. So in, what we are proposing is a model where the users own and control their, their identities, not one, but several. Mm -hmm. with, and, and for that, obviously, to exist, it has to be truly open. Right. It has to. It's not going to scale. And Ubico welcomes all the competitors to come and do other tokens that, you know, integrated in, in SIM cards, integrated in, in jewelry or other form factors. I actually got a really, someone uh, uh, answered my blog when I mm -hmm. wrote about this identity vision. They said, hey, line up with cool comic books and, and you know, famous like Matrix and have cool gadgets that people want to buy. You know, people are crazy about gadgets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, uh, you, okay, if you want to brainstorm for a yeah. sec, you said SIM cards, bad idea because it doesn't really move from phone to phone easily. Uh, what about, people always bring up biometrics. Why is that a bad idea? I wouldn't say it's bad, but it has limitations. It's a static identity that is tied to you, and you cannot revoke it if it's misused, because you don't want to make a face record, you know, face you surgery. Just, you just feel like that. <laughs> uh, I got to log in now. So I would say there are two scenarios where you would have th this biometrics. Um, if there are, there are initiatives where you put it in the phone and you may, you have it to unlock your phone. Just if you already, there's already out there computers that mm -hmm. has the biometrics and you, you know, as a, instead of logging in with a username password, you, you, you take your biometrics to log into your device and then your fingerprint is tied or sort of in with that closed system of your device, mm -hmm. which is okay security. But if you would have a service provider um, having that authentication for you, you know, there is a yeah. server somewhere with your face and your fingerprints and that get hacked. And do, well, for one, do you trust the service provider that now has literally your identity? Yeah. They have, you know, your retina and your fingerprints. Uh, and moreover, like you said, when they when it gets hacked, then, then yeah. suddenly, you know, talk about identity theft. That's, yeah. you know, a true identity <laughs> theft. And you cannot really move between devices uh, uh, that are not yours and you cannot have multiple and anonymous identities because your fingerprint and your face is not anonymous. Mm -hmm. So, so tell me about this. What, what's the solution here where this is great for me to log into my SSH server on my laptop, but now I want to browse the way I want to log in on my phone? You know, what, what's, what's the solution there? Oh. People propose, you know, Bluetooth. <laughs> people pr propose different solutions for mobile devices. But if it is going to be, if this, you know, new global identity solution is going to be adopted, it has to be easy to use on any device. And, and we're in a boon of new devices right now. Yes, yeah, so I think the two interfaces that has the mo best potential is USB. It's already there, mm -hmm. and, and NFC. And NFC is now adopted in more than 150 million smart devices. And it's coming even, you know, and I think the reason why it's coming, it's actually not only because we have a, a little YubiKey that has NFC, but the credit cards and that user experience is so great. You literally, I mean, you take your card and you take your phone mm -hmm. or your laptop and you tap your card to your phone and you've made secure payments. That whole 16 digits expiry date thing, you can just zip code, all of the CCV yeah. number. Yeah. So and that whole hassle of your bank blocking your account because they don't believe you did that transaction. And so, so I think this what's going to drive this and why users will adopt this is the privacy aspect, the simplicity. If you have a, a, a token or a, a identity, you can literally just tap it to your smartphone or your device or plug it into your 
into your computer. You don't have to retype anything. You don't. You don't have to be clever. You can and this is already happening, is what you're saying, yes. as far as like NFC with cards are concerned. Yeah. So will this just be the adoption and that we didn't even know that it just happened overnight and it's like, oh, well now this, I log into my phone uh, or, or what's Ma that? MasterCard is already driving those initiatives, putting NFC into credit cards. And so we're going to, you know, in a few years, it's going to be everywhere. This is going to be great for getting drunk on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. wondering what shows up on Prime the next day. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Uh, you can make really fast payments <laughs> without having to think. <laughs> so what about TPM? Yeah. So isn't that yeah. the solution that we've been talking about? That's been around for ages, right? TPM has been around for 10 years. And in almost all PCs, you have TPM today. Again, it's an identity that's tied to a device. And I personally, I have four d different devices. I have phones, I have tablets, I have different computers, I have a computer at work, at home. Sometimes I log into my husband's computer or my kid's computer or I'm at a friend's house. I don't want to be my device. I have my key in my keychain and I can move it between devices. So I think TPM, I would say in the future you may want to see a combination of TPM and biometrics and the vision I'm outlining. I'm not saying it's not going to be one direction. It's probably going to be a mix and for different use cases. But we've seen TPM for 10 years and why hasn't it scaled? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right that the credit cards really have the most uh, ability to, to get actually some adoption because there's so much industry behind that, both on the retail level and the consumer ease and the banks that want that kind of security. And really just kind of adds a value add, whereas the TPM, when you say, hey, the value add is you're more secure, people are like, I have to do what now to be more secure? No. Yeah. I mean, the simplicity and saving time and saving hassle is really what's going to drive this. So um, with new protocols coming out uh, in the future, what, though, can consumers do today to be more secure, you feel? Moving to two-factor, like Google Authenticator, like YubiKeys, like you know the range of two-factor authentication methods that are out there is a good step. And if you want, if you're a consumer, you can tie uh, two-factor authentication to a password manager, uh, like Password Safe, LastPass, or PassPack, and in that way you can log in. You know you can manage and and secure your range of passwords in a better way than just having one static password to everything. For all of your identities. Uh, so it's yes. sort of, I would say, it's the best we have today. Uh, is that not the same problem, though, that you're talking about uh, solving, is that there's uh, Nobody wants to adopt a system that is controlled by one company. I mean, remember in the 90s, Microsoft with their passport thing. Nobody wanted to just trust Microsoft for their logins everywhere. Is that not the same thing when it comes to a password manager? Yes, but there are open source versions. OK. So they are. Uh, and, and you can. So the ones who are really security aware, they may choose the open source version. Then there, there are good security versions, too, uh, that I would I would use instead of having bad, you know, s simple passwords for everything. So I think there's a combination, you know, there's a balance between. So you're saying like any step is better than no step at all. But <laughs> yes. if you're really paranoid, go yeah. with the open source stuff. Yeah. Maybe host it yourself. Yeah. Put the authentication, put the control back in your hands as far as yeah. your identity. So but really where I hope this to go is a next generation internet where the full potential of the internet would be unfold. If you can vote on your president online, if you can put your healthcare records online, if you, don't, if you and I don't have to sign, send papers physically with the post anymore mm -hmm. to sign contracts, we can just do it with legally binding signatures online. That, that internet is going to be so cool. And that is actually possible with new protocols coming out. That is so exciting. All right, well, Stina, it's a pleasure having you as always. <laughs> OK, thank you. Got an idea for new business? Want to publish a blog or a portfolio? Domain.com is the best place to go. You probably need to register a new .com domain name for that new site. A .com domain name is the original. It's globally understood and immediately gives credibility to your website, no matter what name you choose. Plus, if you want to invest in and sell domains, .coms have the highest aftermarket value. You can find the perfect name at Domain.com. Darren and I use Domain.com because of their affordable, reliable, and their easy-to-use service. Plus, Domain.com is super active on social media, like Twitter at Domain.com, and their great 
customer support makes it a really fun place to do business. So the guys at Domain.com want to hook our fans up with an awesome offer. Get 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use coupon code HAK5 at Domain.com's checkout. That's 15% off and use the coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think Domain.com.